Irving Penn, alongside Richard Avedon and Helmut Newton, stands as one of the great portraitists and fashion photographers in America. Penn's career spanned nearly six decades, encompassing a wide spectrum of work, most notably for Vogue magazine. Best known for his fashion photography, Penn's repertoire also includes portraits of creative greats, ethnographic photographs from around the world, modernist still lives of food, bones, bottles, metal, and found objects, and photographic travel essays. Penn was among the first photographers to pose subjects against a simple gray or white backdrop and he effectively used this simplicity. Expanding his austere studio surroundings, Penn constructed a set of upright angled backdrops to form a stark, acute corner. Subjects photographed with this technique included Martha Graham, Marcel Duchamp, Pablo Picasso, Georgia O'Keeffe, W. H. Auden, and Igor Stravinsky. Penn's still life compositions are spare and highly organized assemblages of food or objects that articulate the abstract interplay of line and volume. Penn's photographs are composed with a great attention to detail, which continues into his craft of developing and making prints of his photographs. Penn experimented with many printing techniques, including prints made on aluminum sheets coated with a platinum emulsion, rendering the image with a warmth that untinned silver prints lacked. His black and white prints are notable for their deep contrast, giving them a clean, crisp look. While steeped in a modernist tradition, Penn also ventured beyond creative boundaries. The exhibition of earthly bodies consisted of series of posed nudes whose physical shapes range from thin to plump, while the photographs were taken in 1949 and 1950, they were not exhibited until 1980, perhaps in part because of questions about the public reception of the graphic representations of the female nude. Throughout his career, Irving Penn proved to be an exceptional visual storyteller, exploring the diversity of the world through his unique lens. His ability to seamlessly blend impeccable technique with artistic expression, has left an enduring legacy in photography. Ultimately, Penn not only captured moments and subjects but also encapsulated timeless emotions and concepts. His influence continues to resonate in contemporary photography, reminding us of the timelessness of his work and his unparalleled contribution to visual art. Irving Penn was born in 1917 in Plainfield, New Jersey to immigrant parents, Penn attended the Philadelphia Museum School of Industrial Arts from 1934 to 38 and studied with Alexei Brodovich in his design laboratory. A formidable Russian émigré who worked in Paris in the 1920s, Brodovich taught the application of principles of modern art and design through exposure to magazines, exhibitions, architecture, and photography. After some time in New York as Brodovich's assistant at Harper's Bazaar and various art director jobs, Penn went to Mexico to paint in 1941, traveling through the American South and taking photographs along the way. He was ultimately disappointed by his paintings and destroyed them before returning to New York late the following year. In 1943, the new art director at Vogue, Alexander Lieberman, hired Penn as his associate to prepare layouts and suggest ideas for covers to the magazine's photographers. Lieberman, another Russian émigré who had worked in Paris, looked at Penn's contact sheets from his recent travels and recognized a mind, and an eye that knew what it wanted to see. He encouraged Penn to begin taking the photographs that he envisioned, launching a long and fruitful career as well as a collaboration that transformed modern photography. After the Second World War, as Penn quickly developed a reputation for his striking style in still life and portraiture, Lieberman sent him around the world on portrait and fashion assignments. These were formative experiences, which confirmed Penn's preference for photographing in the controlled environment of a studio, where he could trim away anything that was not essential to his compositions and hone in on his subjects. Separate from these assignments, Penn undertook a major personal project, photographing fleshy nudes at close range in the studio and experimenting with their printing to break through the slickness of the image. It was a new approach to photography that stemmed from profound reflection on earlier art historical models, 
but the images were deemed too provocative and not shown for decades. In 1950, Penn was sent to Paris to photograph the haute couture collections for Vogue. He worked in a daylight studio with an old theater curtain as a backdrop, and was graced with an extraordinary model named Lisa Fonsegrives, whom he first encountered in 1947. Born in Sweden and trained as a dancer, she was one of the most sought-after fashion models of the time, with a sophisticated understanding of form and posture. Penn later recalled, when Lisa came in, I saw her and my heart beat fast and there was never any doubt that this was it. They were married in London in September 1950. During this time, Penn also worked on a project inspired by a tradition of old prints, photographing the small trades, butchers, bakers, workmen, and eccentrics who belonged to a disappearing world. Penn's travel for Vogue increased between 1964 and 1971, taking him to Japan, Crete, Spain, Dahomey, Nepal, Cameroon, New Guinea, and Morocco. On these trips Penn was increasingly free to focus on what truly interested him, making portraits of people in natural light. On the early trips, he adapted existing spaces like a garage or a barn to his needs, and noted the crucial role of a neutral environment to encourage the respectful exchange he was interested in. Eventually this led him to construct a tent studio that could be dismantled and taken from location to location. Penn felt in this limbo of the tent there was for us both the possibility of contact that was a revelation to me and often, I could tell, a moving experience for the subjects themselves, who without words, by only their stance and their concentration, were able to say much that spanned the gulf between our different worlds. Penn's work initially had an ideal outlet on the pages of Vogue, where it was finely reproduced and widely disseminated. However, in the early 1950s, the editors began to feel that Penn's photographs were too severe for the magazine, that they burned on the page. As a result, his assignments were reduced and he turned to advertising. Penn welcomed the challenges this new field offered, particularly in the areas of still-life photography, and experimented with strobe lights to produce dynamic images that revolutionized the use of photography in advertising. By the early 1960s, magazine budgets were strained and there was a decline in the quality of the offset reproductions. Although Penn was again photographing extensively for the magazine, he grew increasingly disappointed by the way his photographs appeared on the page, commenting that he even avoided looking at them because they hurt too much. His solution to this predicament was to quietly pioneer a revival of earlier printing techniques, revolutionary for a time when photographic prints were not considered artistic objects. Beginning with extensive research and experimentation, he investigated 19th-century methods that could offer greater control over the subtle variations and tonalities he sought in a print. He pressed on with his investigations until he perfected a complex process for printing in platinum and palladium metals, enlarging negatives for contact printing on hand-sensitized artists' paper, which was adhered to an aluminum sheet so that it could withstand multiple coatings and printings. In the early 1970s, Penn closed his Manhattan studio and immersed himself in platinum printing in the laboratory he constructed on the family farm on Long Island, New York. This led to three major series conceived for platinum, Cigarettes in 1972, presented at the Museum of Modern Art in 1975, Street Material in 1975-76, shown at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in 1977, and Archaeology in 1979-80, exhibited at Marlborough Gallery in 1982. Like his earlier nude series, this work departed radically from the prevailing uses of photography. Although many found it repulsive, Penn saw in the subject matter a treasure of the city's refuse, intriguing distorted forms of color, stain, and typography. In 1983, Penn reopened a studio in the city and resumed a busy schedule of commercial work and magazine assignments. The following year, he was honored with a retrospective curated by John Sarkowski at the Museum of Modern Art, which toured internationally until 1989. After the retrospective, Penn resumed painting and drawing as a creative pursuit, even incorporating platinum printing into his practice. 
He also found creative freedom through an invigorating long-distance collaboration with the Japanese designer Issey Miyake, who sent his dynamic, sculptural designs to New York for Penn to interpret photographically. Penn's creativity flourished during the last decades of his life. His innovative portraits, still life, fashion, and beauty photographs continued to appear regularly in Vogue. The studio was busy with magazine, advertising, and personal work, as well as printing and exhibition projects. Penn eagerly embraced new ideas, constructing cameras to photograph debris on the sidewalk, experimenting with a moving band of light during long exposures, or with digital color printing. Book projects were also a priority, and Penn lavished attention on their production, from the design to the quality of the printing. Determined to shape the body of work he left behind from such a prolific career, he also carefully structured and reduced his archives. Particularly after Lisa's death in 1992, he sought solace in his work and in the structure of his studio schedule, and he would paint most nights after work and on weekends. In 2009, Penn died in New York, at the age of 92. During his lifetime, he established the Irving Penn Foundation, which grew out of the studio and whose devotion to Penn's legacy is derived from contact with his remarkable spirit.
In the captivating world of photography, few names shine as brightly as that of Irving Penn. His life, a tapestry woven with the threads of passion, dedication, and an unyielding pursuit of beauty, has left an indelible mark on the art form. Irving Penn's lens was not just a tool, it was an extension of his soul. With each click, he painted portraits that spoke volumes, capturing not only the physical form but the essence of his subjects. His photographs were windows into the human spirit, frozen moments that whispered stories of resilience, vulnerability, and the profound beauty inherent in the mundane. In the quiet dance between light and shadow, Penn found a language that transcended words. His compositions were meticulous, each frame a carefully crafted symphony of lines and curves. It was as if he sought to reveal the poetry hidden in the ordinary, urging us to look beyond the surface and discover the extraordinary in the commonplace. As we reflect on the life of Irving Penn, we are prompted to consider the lessons embedded in his artistic journey. Beyond the technical mastery, Penn's legacy implores us to approach our craft with a profound sense of purpose. He reminds us that a photograph is not just a visual record, it is a narrative, a tale told through the eyes of the beholder. In our own photographic endeavors, let us embrace the spirit of Penn, the commitment to authenticity, the patience to unveil hidden narratives, and the courage to find beauty in unexpected places. Like Penn, may we learn to see beyond the surface, to delve into the soul of our subjects and, in doing so, discover the unspoken stories that bind us all. Irving Penn's lens may have captured moments frozen in time, but his spirit invites us to keep exploring, to keep seeking, and to keep telling the stories that matter. As photographers, let us carry forward the torch of his legacy, not merely as a tribute but as a commitment to infuse our art with the depth, emotion, and contemplation that define the life of this extraordinary artist. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel. This way, you'll always stay up to date with all the videos I produce here. Until the next one. See you later.